I think it's very West Side Story. It's very just like, well, I know you're in South London. Well, I know yeah. you're in East London. I respect you. I respect you too. Well, yeah. and we'll never say anything ever, but we'll still just be like Kiki because we're just, I mean, we're just gay boys and gay girls and just yeah. living our lives. Hello, DJ, drag superstar, and all round humble human being, Jodie Marsh here. Welcome to Drag Race UK Tea Time, presented by Attitude Magazine. A weekly show where I'll be spilling the freshly brewed tea with the latest eliminated queen from series two. Today, I'm joined by Astina Mandela. Astina Mandela! Jodie, my love! How are you? Oh, I'm fab, babe. I'm well, you know, just, um, just living the life. Living the life. How are you, my sweet? I'm really good. You look amazing. Thank you. I just thought I'd, I I thought I'd go for a little Simone vibe, actually. I like it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I see the reference. I like it. Have you had a great time on the show? It's been, oh, Joey, it was so much fun. It's so fun to watch it as, again and like relive, relive it, if it makes sense. Oh. The, like the goods, the high, the lows, the funs, the cries. Like it's so good to just relive it and watch it and just let everyone see it. I mean, we filmed this, what, back yeah. in March? Yeah. So, like, yeah. it was a long time ago. So it's fun to see it again. Does it feel different when you're watching it back as opposed to when you're when you're there? Like how how is it kind of watching yourself in the moment? It's um it's weird because it's well, especially like now, I guess like you the other like queens and seasons, like they filmed it and then it's out in like three months, six months. Where we film this in such a like, you know, a paddy D and then it's such a long break. And then to see it, I'm like, first of all, that's a different person. I don't even know who I'm watching. I'm watching, right. like a, I'm watching my past self and I'm watching all the things that like I've moved on and I've processed yeah. and I've lived through. You feel like you've changed a lot since. since yeah, not like, yeah, not really like changed, but I'm just like, I can see I've grown. I can see mm. I've evolved and I can see that I've learned from all the things I was going through. And right. not that I've like forgot them, but it's just like, I now accept them. And I understand what they are more. You established yourself as a front runner early on after winning the first challenge. Mm. So were you disappointed to not go a little bit further? Yeah, I was. I was. You know, at the end of the day, there's so much, you know, we, there's however many challenge runways there are. I was so excited to show myself and show these outfits that I had made. The only outfit I didn't make was the East London one. Everything right. else was sewed. It would be about I got sewn and someone made it for me or I sewed myself and made myself. Yeah. So I was like a bit gutted that like I didn't get to showcase all of it. But yeah. at the end of the day, the outfits, that, the four outfits that I showed are all yeah. different. I also yeah. won, won the first challenge, so no one can take that away from me. Merry Christmas, Absolutely. Happy New Year. And an ASOS Absolutely. jacket, let's remember and, that. And Ahura <laughs> had quite a lot to say about your ASOS jacket. Oh, so all, do you the, like all that? the words. That's a bit unfair. Um, do you know what? It's not because Ginny, like Ginny said, it's just like, well, you, you must be threatened. And then no, like compared to like an ASOS jacket, yeah, cheap. The Naomi outfit cost me over a grand. Right, right. Like when you, um, one thing I, I love is when you were sparking that conversation with Taste about queer POC representation mm -hmm. in back in episode one. Do you feel like representation in media is improving now? It's got better, like completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the other day, what's it? Even if we just think of just LGBTQ plus the whole umbrella. Um, it's a sin has just been released. Like, Amazing. just that coming out is such is so, you know, it's a representation for the whole community, mm. and like, you know, it is building, it's growing, it's gonna take another seven thousand million years, however long it's gonna take till we're all fully, fully seen on TV and mainstream. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's happening, and not just mainstream, all fields of art and work. You know, yeah. from music to dancing to club nights to books to poetry yeah to you know nurses like it's just gonna take a while but um it's getting better slowly and yeah. slowly and you mentioned naomi campbell so you were asked to represent the british queer icon and you chose naomi so what does she represent for you she she represents she represents power mm. for me she represents that you are so as a black person we're already like so pushed down from the world you know you're there and she's like well no I'm not I'm here you can't ever you can't not exist that I, I'm here I live and that's what she represents to me like no matter how hard done by or how much hardship is placed upon you 
you are so powerful that no one can take that away from you. And that's what she represents to me. And also yeah. like, it's also the runway. It's also a show. Yeah. What am I going to do that's going to look good on stage? Like yeah. it all plays the part. Um, and I looked amazing. Do you think she was watching? I know she's she's a fan of Drag Race. Um, I think, yeah, I think she, I think she's definitely seen it. Like there's no way she wouldn't have. Um, sure. But yeah. she's well, a okay. busy, she's a busy girl. Like Jesus Christ. I'm not expecting her to be like, um, yeah, can I speak to us, Gina, please? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, babe, she's got things going on in her life. But I'm, yeah. again, it's just like, I'm thanking, I'm blessed that I got to pay homage yeah. and yeah. honor to her, especially in like an outfit that's not iconic, but it was iconic for her because she came back to Valentino to walk in, um, I can't say his name, the fashion show. And that's why I wanted, when I saw it, I was like, yeah. Right. So let's talk about this week's episode. So we mm. saw you say before you went on the runway that you thought you might need to add more into your look. Do you regret not doing that now? Um, oh God, people are really- oh, she's, That's me. Naomi. Naomi's oh, called- It's Naomi! Oh my God, <laughs> Naomi! <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we, like, when we were filming, I was going through, I remember thinking, I'm just over it. I was over the day. I was over the show, I was over production, I was over like the whole entire, the whole entire thing. And I just remember thinking, I can't bother now, I'm done. I just don't wanna, I don't even wanna keep going on anymore because I just can't be bothered. Um, yeah, Cause I, th I think going on one of those um, shows, people don't really understand how much goes into it and how- Like, but I mean, like when you, I remember when you, like we were doing the carnival and then you walked in yeah. and I was just thinking, do you know what? I forget everything that's going on. I'm just going to pretend we're at the club right now and I'm just going to yeah. have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> and it was even just that little moment, even though it's a mini challenge, it was such an escape for all yeah. of us because we were just like, yeah. But then like, you know, we have to drive them back into working. You know, some days we're up, we finish at like 11 o'clock at night. Mm. So Driving like, serious business. And it's, it's like, it's a lot. And like, you yeah. know, TV world and compared to the drag world, Lord have mercy, it's the same thing, but it's so different and it really, it really takes it, takes it on you. And they're also like, they're testing you the whole way. As soon as they send you, as soon as you apply, they're testing you. You have to process and really look at yourself, really inside, look at your emotions, look at your style, look at your design. And that's what it's about. And you did, you see, don't see half of that on the hour show. Yeah. And that is drag. And that's it? drag, that's the yeah. truth of it Or Like, yeah, it's an art form and yeah, it's this, but, 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 but like, it's really about dwelling into who you are as people, mm. that person and, you know, really uh, just allowing what you want the world to see, but also mm. give it, give it to people and let these people know who you are. And, you know, we're here to entertain, but we're also here to educate and we're also yeah. here to be absolutely. political. Yeah, absolutely. So you were incredibly um, gracious in your Lost the Tear coffee and you said you were proud of her. So to settle this once and for all, is there any beef between East London and South London Queens? Uh, yes, but I think it's, I, I think there is. I think no one can ever be like, there's no beef because there's beef for sure. But I think it's just story. like, you know, I think it's, I think it's very West Side Story. It's very just like, well, I know you're a South London. Well, I know yeah. you're in East London. I respect you. I respect you too. Well, yeah. and we'll never say anything ever, but we'll still just be like Kiki because we're just, I mean, we're just gay boys and gay girls and just yeah. living our lives. So we're just going to have fun and just it's have shady. a party. Yeah. It's that, but at, part, part of us are just like, well, yeah. we have we we have the Troxy. Well, yeah, yeah, we yeah. have the two brewers. <laughs> well, we have it's a festival. Tough, well, I get to go on the plane. <laughs> it's just all that. And at the end of the day, it's just like, babe, just take your wig off. Who are you? What do you feel? Yeah, yeah. And I've obviously known you from um, the clubs over the years, like mm. seeing the pink and all those places. How did you get into drag? And um, and when did you start doing drag? So I started, um, I mean, really and truly, I kind of started when I was like, I think it was 20. I think I went to Pride, um, you know, as you do. What, how it all starts very personally, go to Pride and then Kind of just was like, eh, never do anything because I was still dancing and performing for um, companies and different gigs. And then I met Sync, uh, met Sync the Pink. I was dancing for Raven, obviously, as a boy. Yeah. And then Sync the Pink kind of happened, and I was with them. And then one You're time, missing. I was missing. missing the Pink in 2017. Yes. yes. But I like it was 2016 when I did we did New Year's Eve at the Clapham Grand. And then I'm just like, flawless on stage, flouncing around, absolutely pissed off, our face and drunk. 
and then um, One Night Only came on and somehow, I don't know what happened, everyone started walking off stage, but for some reason I started walking to the front of the stage and then I just gave this like solo performance on New Year's Eve for free for everyone because you do, you just live your life. And then kind of that's where it just kicked off. I was like, this is what I want to do. Right, right, right. It's my art. I get to be my creative director. I get my own manager, my own boss. And yeah. I get to do me and just live this fantasy and this real reality of a pop star, really and truly. Yeah, yeah. And then it just and, kind of dwelled from there. Yeah. And also let's not beat it around the bush. You're a good looking queen. So you've had a lot of thirsty comments both on the show and online. I saw mm. Research. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Alti, was it a bit of a blow that um, Taste was voted trade of the season? Um, every, I had everyone was kind of like, oh, Aston's going to get it. And I was just like, well, no, because everyone is attractive in different ways. But the issue I have with it is what trade means is not what tr the trade everyone knows. Because trade is like someone who will just take you to bed and do like an ass. Okay. Where well, everyone's just like, oh, attractive, hot. And I'm just like, yeah, but Taste is actually stunning. She is hot. And yeah. also as well, it's TV. So yeah. me not getting trade actually makes TV. And I'm yeah. just like, at the end of the day, I know I'm hot. Listen, the phone call is always happening. The messages are there. Oh, it's just like people sliding into your DMs. I'm just, I'm just like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's the request. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, please I hold can. Naomi. I'm just in my right Darling, now. Darling, like, Valentina, I'll call you back tomorrow because yeah. you know, the, the boys are calling. I saw um, an incredible video of you death dropping from the top of the stairs at Metropolis, which is, of course, an old haunt of mine. Too. Oh, good old home grey for us. We love yeah. it. Yeah, it was very, um, is it Tandy and Man Dupree? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How did you not break something doing that? How do you do that? Um, First of all, I mean, that that was way back when, when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth, first of all. Um, but I just remember, like, just dropping. I remember, like, using the two poles as, like, a, a supportive barrier. So you just go down. And because I'm, you know, I'm a flexible person. B Bimini may be the bendiest bitch, but you know, she can stretch. Yeah. And you just <laughs> go down and, like, it's it's... Not that I'm a science science person or scientific, but it's just using the gravity of, like, just not... <laughs> But like you going like that, like you know, like you're pressing something down. That it's yeah. just using the gravity and just letting, and then just just breaking yourself. I mean, it's drag after all. It's drag. I wish we could have seen more of you lip syncing. Actually, I would have loved to see more performance from you. Yeah, you know, I mean, do you know what? The one thing I was really looking forward to, as soon as I like, I knew um, me and Taste were the show is me and Taste are lip sync. Oh, that would have been. I yeah. that's the one thing I wanted. We'll see that in real life. I imagine but that's that was gonna happen. I'm gonna give you some quick fire questions. Go on, babe. Who was your snatch game going to be? Um, so I had three. I had Azealia Banks. Amazing. Um, Ricky Thompson and Mel B. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Which we could have seen Mel B. <laughs> <laughs> Which queen did you bond with most on the show? Do you know what? I really bonded with Cherry. Yeah, love. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself on the show in just a few words? It's okay to f*** up and follow, be unapologetically you. Great. What was the biggest drama of the series for you, Spill the Tea? Um, me leaving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Rue says that there's no such thing as losing on this show. So what is next for you? Um, I have no idea. I'm just gonna follow my goals, tick my boxes off, and just try and dabble in everything that I've wanted to dabble in. You yeah. know, in drag, out of drag, out of the arts, out of creative arts, you know, just build my skill set, learn things, try things, and just let Astina Mandela just destroy the world and then um, Amazing. Create a new world for everyone. I can't wait to see it. Amazing. Oh, it's gonna be fun, babe. Thanks so much for coming on and chatting today. Babe, pleasure. Thank you so much again for having me. It's so good to see you. I know, in real life. Oh my God, in real life by a virtual laptop. Thanks for watching Drag Race UK Tea Time, served to you by Attitude Magazine. Tune in next week for another scolding hot cup of tea with the Eliminated Queen.